All right, you guys. Hello again. Got a case here that is not working. You can tell it's all froze up. These lines are all froze up. So I closed the valve on it here, and you can see you can see behind the motors that it is a, it is a nice wall of clear glass ice. So I've got to check another unit. Actually, I got three other work orders here, so I'm gonna let this run for a while with the valve closed, see if I can get it to melt some of that ice. Then the ice and the fan to the meat department is this. And I've got a video where I, I changed that dryer out uh, a few months ago, but we've got ice again. This one, it's on the same rack. It looks like looks like it's actually in defrost now. Yeah, I do think that's what's occurring. On the work order that, in addition to what they listed on the work order, I've got to deal with this one, which is the bakery cooler. And then I've got supposed to be a fourth task to do. In the, in the cooler of the meat department. I, we'll go check that out in a little bit. So my first unit that I was messing with is over there. Oh, there's a I don't want you to see me making a video. All right, so this is where the first unit is. That one is in there. I've got that one defrosting. This is my bakery cooler. I've got a controller up there see up there hiding from everybody really smart place to put a, a controller don't you think so we're gonna force it into a defrost make that ice melt okay good now I know I set this to something the last time I was here so let's let's see if they've changed that not be surprised. Four per day and 30 minutes each. That's, I think that's about right. Yeah, okay. All right, so while we've got that one in the bakery defrosting, let's come over here to rack D. Go to D5. What the? hell is going on here? They need to do something about this. This is not cool. Alright, whatever. Alright, back into... Alright. Coming into rack D. Over there. Got the controller right here. So, I want to... Go into D, I want to go to D5, which is right there. And I want to initiate a defrost. Service. Okay, I guess it's that simple. Sometimes you gotta put a password in, that should change to a D here in a minute. Yeah, there we go. D. It means it's in defrost. So they kind of want me to hurry up. So I'm using hot water to try to speed it up.
Let me fill with some hot water. Go at it again. I'm gonna go at it on this side now. So now that I've given it that little boost, I think that the defrost cycle will finish it off. That's what I think. But I also want to check the ends to make sure that I'm sure there's ice up there that I gotta get down on the, you know, on the end caps over there and over there. All right there, I'm gonna get rid of that. All right, so this is the last blob of ice that I have on this evaporator. And then, be able to start it up and find out if this right side, my right hand side is freezing up more, frosting more than the other side is. If it is, I need to figure out why. All right, I believe I got all of it. Let me see. Yeah. Okay. There's TXV. Ah, so the sensing bulb also was submerged in ice. 
Now that's interesting. This will be starting up again soon, really soon. We'll go check on that. Uh, we'll go check on that other case, the flan case, open display case while we wait on this to restart. And I want to come over here once it restarts. I want to look at my at my circuits and see what they're doing. So I'm gonna leave my I'm gonna leave all this shit the way I have it because they got it packed in here. Coming out of the bakery, walking right there, my other flan case is right there. Right there, it's real close by. And there's still not enough air. Still milky. Yep, still milking. And of course, I'm gone for like five minutes, ten minutes, and they get all their bakery carts right back in the way. But I had them all moved off to the side, and they get them all right back in the way. Very interesting. Oh, so I've got it back on now, and it's running. Just barely started up. Now, you'll notice it get more pronounced in the next few minutes, but the right side is frosting up a lot more than the left side. So what would cause this? I'm curious to know, how often do you guys see this? Because I do not see this very often at all. I have seen it, but not too often. And I actually still have to go back and resolve this job. So here we can clearly, clearly see that this one over here is icing a lot more than this one over here. So it seems to me, I could be wrong, but it seems to me that something is wrong here. Something's wrong in here causing uh, more or less to go into this one. I'm thinking more but we got a restriction in one of them but they got to approve that because this is on a rack and it's a lot to do sort of so here this one struggles it struggles to me to reach that point it does not work very well and we've got this issue of it um, frosting up in the and the evaporator the one side so we need to follow up on that but we're gonna recommend to um, for them to empty the box into the case out to figure out where they're gonna put all that stuff when we do that um, and we'll probably have to quote it because it's, it's gonna be a little while to to pump the rack down and do that for the other case the open case on the sales floor I barely had it running for like 10-15 minutes and this dipshit filled it back up with product, so. All right, so these stores are very ghetto. They have very sophisticated Hussman Protocol racks with Danfoss controllers on them, but it's like they don't have a subscription to Danfoss or something because 
None of the the Danfoss controller does not control temperature on anything. They have installed temp controllers, KE2s on all the separate cases, and and that's how they are controlling temp instead of using very nice Danfoss controller that hooks in to the you know wireless network. And you can you know it's uh, what's it called um, energy management systems or building automation. Yeah. Like, why don't they use that? They have everything for it. Now, after I got this started up, I was messing with the controller, trying to figure out why it was doing what it was doing, freezing up, because what happens is the controller set for about 35 or 33. I think they had it set for 33. I'm not sure if I could see it right there. But as soon as it comes on, it, it starts dropping temps so fast that by the time it hits set point on the on the controller, the controller will shut off, but the case will drop another four degrees below that. So let's say it'll come on. I see right now it's going up. 35.4. It's gonna kick on, and when it kicks on, it continues to drop temp like five degrees beyond the set point or what it kicked on, kicked off at. So it's going to kick on here like around 38 and when it stops like around 34 it's going to go all the way down to 29 it's going to have a time delay that they have programmed into it and after that time delay expires it's going to kick on again at 38 stop at 34 or shut de-energize the solenoid at 34 but it's going to cool down to 29 again and it's going to do this over and over again it's going to cause the coil to freeze and then they're that's how they're regulating the, the case temperature in there to keep it like around 29 or 30 where they want the cakes at is by using all these methods that they they've implemented here they've tweaked it just right to where to where that's how they get the case to stay where they want it to stay instead of doing it the right way and so the result is it freezes up to that big sheet of clear glass looking ice that we came up on at the beginning of the video and it should be fixed right and so it should shut off my solenoid once it gets below 35 and hopefully it doesn't get too much colder than that it's going to go down though to like 31 watch This is being, this is overstocked. They're stocking it too much. So on the subject of overstocking, it doesn't really look like it too much. You really gotta focus and look in on it, but they are sticking the product out a little bit too far and it does partially block the airflow going from the return into the supply, vice versa. So if you look at the manual here, it says, not to do that and I tell them I tell these guys over and over again this stuff and they tell their their stockers you know, the managers they tell the stockers and I'll be right there with them and they never listen it's actually a very simple theory and thing to follow it's not very difficult at all it clearly says do not overload the food product or it will stop working so if you look carefully here on the bottom, you'll see that the airflow line is closer to the shelves of these openings. So you've got the opening on the top and the line goes to the right hand side of that little line for the opening. And at the bottom, same thing, you've got a little um, 
like a little divider at the bottom to separate the return air grill from the product and your product cannot rise above to impede this line of airflow. So this is what they called in as a diffuser having um, water on it. Oh my god, look at that. That is disgusting, you guys. Jesus Christ. Am I gonna be underneath this thing when it's raining? Oh my god. Probs of ice. You see? Mm hmm. I'm calling this opening number one. Mm-hmm. Number two. Right, again, guys, seriously, the camera. Oh, you can also use a, a bag, like a bigger, any kind of plastic. Just cover the motor windings like that. It's a good thing we got some hot water here. It is pretty freaking hot. I've never had a motor short myself, but many people think that it happened. I believe it. I personally find it easiest to get behind the ice and up against the coil and to get the ice off of the coil and like clear like like a vertical clearing and let the glob of ice fall forward. Another glob. This one's bulging out into the metal divider. nasty ass coil dude. Like I said earlier, they wonder why their shit freezes up. Look at that shit. Fucking nasty man. What the hell is all that? On the coil in the meat department. You can see the red filth coming off of it. Like right there, look at that. You see the red in the water? Ooh. 
Yeah, that's an extra shit, yo. At least it's going down though and it's coming off, right? I guess. I don't know why the hell it's red, yo. Yeah. Your guess is as good as mine. Good thing we got some hot water to do this with, though. Okay. Almost home free, you guys. Okay. You can still see the ice hanging out down underneath on the bottom. See? Right down there. Ooh, look at red nasty. I like it when the drain keeps up. Now I should be able to attack it from the front and the ice will come off. Oh, look at all that red shit. Ew. That's some nasty shit. Oh, it's everywhere y'all. It's even around the rim of the of the fan shroud opening and at the bottom of the drain pan right there. Look at that. Ah, what is all that shit? Huh. All right, I guess I gotta take that freaking cover off too. Number three. And this is where my footage ends, guys. Don't have any more. Actually, I still got to go back there. My company floods us with so many service calls that it's just ridiculous. But thanks for watching, and I uh, appreciate all the support, all the comments, and subscribe if you haven't, so I can hire a cameraman. Catch y'all later.